two, one, boom, and we are live. I am joined by friend, colleague, writer for Sports Illustrated, Kansas City Chiefs, inner circle, Jordan Foote. How are you? Max, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me back on. It's always a good time. You're a regular now. I told you, once you come on and become a regular, I have to bug you. So whether you like me or not (laughs) here on out, I'm going to do it. Every week, man. Let's keep doing it. Every week. Yeah. So these NFL episodes have been spectacular. So we finished, we, we started it towards the end of the season. And then obviously like the holiday season came. So it was a little bit busy, but then we started to ramp it up back to finish the season. And then now the postseason, um, we had spectacular games this past week. And now we're starting to get to the final stretch of the postseason. Um, things are starting to get really, really intriguing because these are the best of the best like there's it's not a secret that you have tom brady josh allen patrick mahomes Mm -hmm. and aaron Rodgers. it's not a coincidence that those are the final four guys at quarterback position so um let's start off with before we dive into each individual game what did you take away from that day as overall as like just overall content as a fan it was everything you wanted and more yeah man it was it was insane and like Really, I was sitting back this week, and I think ESPN tweeted out a graphic. like, And it was just the four quarterbacks that are in the, the championship games. And I was like, holy <laughs> crap. Like, It's the young guns on the AFC side and Allen and Mahomes, probably the two best quarterbacks in the conference. You could probably throw Watson in there with them. But either way, yeah. then on the NFC side, we have wanted Brady versus Rodgers in the playoffs for 15 yep. years. <laughs> and like, it took Brady going to the NFC and Rodgers finally getting that coach that fits him to where we're finally going to get it. So it's just insane to think about, like, man, I know we're fairly young still, but this is maybe the yeah. best matchup uh, bracket that I've seen in quite a few years, I think. I was about to say, if you're Roger Cadell, you couldn't have scripted this any better. So mm-hmm. we're going to take Tom Brady go to Tampa, and then he's going to make it to go against the MVP of the league, Aaron Rodgers, yeah. like you said, been waiting for 15 years. And then, okay, um, you guys say Patrick Mahomes is the best young quarterback. The next guy that's contending against him is Josh Allen. So let's put them yeah. against each other. And then the winner, it works out perfectly because now you get the winner. Let's just say hypothetically it's Patrick Mahomes, or even if it is Josh Allen, you get the young versus old anyway. Mm-hmm. And so it's perfect. Could you imagine seeing Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, which I believe we will see? I mean, spoiler yeah. alert. And then you have <laughs> Josh Allen and or you have Tom Brady. Either way, you're getting the new versus the old. And I think that's such a cool storyline like the nfl doesn't rely on its star power the way the nba does per Mm -hmm. se it's about the shield before it's about the player but it certainly helps when you have both working for you and so now you get the Mm storylines plus the way uh, the business model is at the nfl so that's a great point yeah that's a fantastic point um so my question for you would be but let's dive into the green bay game and so green bay we both predicted would beat the rams Mm -hmm. um I don't think it's any secret. We both think Aaron Rodgers is better than Jared Goff and just the momentum that they had. But you mentioned Matt LaFleur. You mentioned the coaching staff. So you could just tell it's a different dynamic, right? You could just tell Aaron Rodgers seems happier. He has a younger coach, a more progressive coach. Like, it just jumps off the television screen, or am I crazy? No, you're not. And, like, they – someone clipped up a video of like that Aaron Rodgers uh, smirk that he gets. And like, when you see that in the game, you're doomed, like you're, (laughs) you're done for. And we've seen that a lot this year. Like that dude, maybe the smartest quarterback in the NFL, like him and Tom Brady, probably one and two in either order, but man, he's happy. Like you said, and that's a big deal for a dude like him. Like that guy needs to be, he kind of has that LeBron aspect where like, if he's not happy, you're going to know about it and mm-hmm. things are going to change. And he wasn't happy. Things changed. Matt LaFleur, it took a year, I think, for him, or close to a year for him to, like, earn that mutual respect and, like, they bonded together. But this year, man, they're good friends. Like, I read an article, man, I think it was The Ringer, um, about how LaFleur walked up to Rodgers before the game, and, like, literally they're, like, about to go to the sideline. He's like, yeah, I was just watching a, a little bit of tape on the Rams. This is what they do in the two-minute drill, blah, blah, blah. And Rodgers is like, you were literally just watching film right now, like, <laughs> five minutes before game time. He was like, yeah, I was just watching some last-minute stuff. So it's – they're both crazy about being prepared. They're both unbelievably smart. Um, LaFleur is a young guy that, like, he's not afraid to let Rodgers be himself. And I think vice versa is also true. So, man, they are a perfect combo so far. This has to look bad on Mike McCarthy. 
Like I'm oh, just the horrible. The elephant, <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say the elephant in the room. I know I'm I'm a glass half full guy. I like to look at the positives in the situation, but mm -hmm. the elephant in the room is this looks terrible for Mike McCarthy, and especially not having success in Dallas so far, right? Yeah, and even if Dak would have been healthy and they did make the playoffs, like let's be real, that team wasn't going to go too far. Like Dak's a good quarterback; he maybe even be a great quarterback, but they're not getting past Brady. They're not getting past Aaron Rodgers. They might not have gotten past Drew Brees. Like that team wasn't going to go anywhere. So I think it does say a lot more about um, people were worried about who would win the breakup. And I think it's safe to say that Rodgers ended up winning it. Yeah, for sure. And I think the Green Bay just looks like they're on fire right now. Um, okay, we talked about Tampa. Talk about a breakup. I think let's transition to Tampa Bay. I think it's obvious Tom Brady won the breakup with Bill Belichick in New England. Like it's just he won it already, considering. They clearly missed his presence, his absence mm -hmm. is them. And now this is the icing on the cake. I didn't we I didn't think he was going to beat the Saints. Um, I mean, I've said it in the beginning of the season. I said if they click, it wouldn't surprise me if they make it to the Super Bowl. But when I saw this matchup, I went with my head and I'm like, I just think the Saints have they have one of the best rosters in the league. Mm -hmm. And so for him to beat Drew Brees, to beat the Saints, and now all of a sudden go to the conference championship, it's like this was the icing on the cake to say I won the divorce, right? Yeah, and man, the scary thing is I don't even think they've clicked yet. Like, as a team, like that, I watch them every week, and I'm like, I'm waiting for a dominant blowout performance or Brady to look completely comfortable or in sync with the receivers or Arians calling up the best plays for a full game. That hasn't happened all year. And, like, they are they went, what, 11-5, and five and they've mm -hmm. dominated pretty much throughout the playoffs. So, man, it's it's scary, and, like, I'm going to pick Green Bay, too. I think that everyone listening already knows how we feel about them. But, man, Tampa Bay's a tough team, and they already gave Green Bay the business earlier in the season, so it's it's going to be a tough one. Well, yeah, it's funny. We have been saying that all season long. <laughs> We've been saying mm -hmm. all season long, they're not really even clicking. What is their identity? Yeah. Here they are in the, champ in the conference game. Now, what would they need to do to beat Green Bay? Because I'm going to go with Green Bay. I think you're going Green Bay mm -hmm. as well. So how do you see this game going? What type of game does Tom Brady and the Buccaneers need to have in order to win this game? I think you got to put pressure on Rodgers and get him uncomfortable. That was the key in the first game because they were forcing him into mistakes he doesn't usually make because that right. offensive line is like one of the best two or three in the NFL. I mean, that's a really good unit. So if they can get pressure with four guys and – like, you're not going to stop Devontae Adams. There's no way. But nope. you can slow him down. Like, if you really need to or double him or whatever, you can slow him down. So if they can do that, then Brady's going to have to put up some points. Like, he's not going to be able to put up, like, 23 or 24 and beat Aaron Rodgers in um, Green Bay. Because they hung, what was it, 32 on the Rams? And that's best defense in the NFL. So it's, it's going to take a lot of points and then um, make him Rodgers uncomfortable, I think. Let's be honest here. Tom is competitive. And so, you, yes. he, he, yeah, like, I, think, I don't think that's a secret by now. I mean, he, he he's extremely competitive. He's extremely calculated. And he knows mm -hmm. exactly what this means to go up against Aaron Rodgers and, and what this mm -hmm. means with the storylines and the press and the media. So I'm sure he's doing – he already is dedicated and overly committed. I'm sure he's mm -hmm. watching film right now while we do this podcast when it comes to playing Aaron Rodgers. So – it's going to be interesting. I think, it, like you said, through the storylines and it's Tom and it's Aaron. Um, let me ask you this again in a hypothetical world. And I think that's one of the best things about sports. We always talk about, man, what if this team wins or what does this mean for this? It's just fun to talk about if Tom Brady wins. And let's say he didn't even win the Super Bowl. Is this some, one of the most impressive postseason runs he's ever had just because he was able to, on his first year, to go to the Super Bowl at eight, what, age 44, 45 and do what no one – thought he could do do you think that's like in a nutshell one of the most impressive postseason runs he's ever had oh absolutely and like I get he has the team around him he has a great defense but this offense doesn't suit what Tom Brady does he's not yeah. a deep ball guy he's not a push the ball down the field type of guy the dudes like you said 43 44 just still making these types of plays it's super impressive like we just saw Drew Brees, who's a couple years younger, like 41 or 42. He's done. His arm has been shot for a couple years, and Brady has not really fallen off at all. He's had, like, two bad games all season, if that, and just, I mean, he hasn't looked spectacular, but he's been good enough to win games, so it's it's super impressive if he can do that. It remind, I'm telling you, it reminds now LeBron is still the best player in the world. I don't think Tom Brady sure. is still the best 
player in the world. But what it reminds me of is you look at LeBron, you look at Carmelo, you look at D Wade, Chris Bart, like they, these guys were all in the same draft. And we're looking at yeah. like not playing. Carmelo's a good role player, but like he was struggling to even have a spot on a roster. And we're still judging LeBron as are you the best player in the world? Like it's just mm-hmm. mind blowing to me <laughs> that these guys are the same age or at least we're in the same draft class. We look at Tom Brady, you you look at Big Ben, you look at Drew, and to your point, they clearly look their age, and that's normal. Like that's what's supposed mm-hmm. to happen. But yet Tom is just defying time. Do you credit that to his preparation, the way he takes care of his body? Is that why is that what separates him and LeBron? Is it their preparation and how they take care of their body? Or is there just a secret formula we don't know about? Man, I think it's a combination of things. Because like you said, Brady's gonna outlast Breeze, Phillip Rivers, probably Big Ben. Like that is insane. Hell, if he keeps doing this, he might outlast Aaron Rodgers. Like, I don't know how long Rodgers <laughs> wants to play, but Brady, Brady's going to keep going, I think. I have no clue. But, man, I think part of it's definitely investing back in your body because LeBron spends, what, one and a half million bucks a yeah. year at least on his body, probably more than that. So um, Brady definitely does that. I think a lot of it is also New England protected him for a lot of his career. Like, he didn't take a ton of big hits. He had a good team around him. Um, but in Tampa... He still has that good offensive line, but it's different than where he was at. So, man, it's it's him being smart. It's him being prepared. It's him being competitive. Like, they're just different dudes. Like, LeBron and Brady are on different levels compared to the rest of the people they're playing against. Like, a guy like, man, Kevin Durant. He'll age really well, and he's going to be good for a long time. Or Steph Curry's going to be really good for a long time. LeBron is still the best player in the league, what, 18 years into his career? And Brady is... 20 21 years in and still a really good quarterback it's it's insane you want to know what it reminds me of jordan it reminds me of a fighter where once a fighter reaches a certain point they have nothing left to prove right and so they get mm-hmm. this fatigue they get this unmotivation uh there's nothing to really wake them up at night they say when um i think marvin Hagler said this it's kind of hard to train when you're when you're sleeping in silk sheets like you don't mm-hmm. have that fire anymore but what the all-time greats do, the Floyds, the Ali's, the LeBron and the Toms, is they're able to find things that motivate them, even late yeah. in their like the new challenge. Like going to Miami, that was a challenge. Coming back to Cleveland, that's a challenge. And now going to LA, that was a challenge. So it's like nothing mm-hmm. was stagnant, nothing was old. And with Tom, I think almost going to Tampa extended his longevity because now it's a new challenge, it's a new look, it's a new coach, it's a different atmosphere. So it feels new. If it was the same thing, even though he was in New England for a long time, I think maybe that's that plays a part in it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. And, like, I was one of the people who, before Brady left, I thought he was washed up just because, A, he didn't have any receivers. The offensive line wasn't playing well. They weren't winning games. They were, like, 2-5 and five in their last seven or whatever down the stretch in New England or 3-4 and four or whatever it was. Then they were they lost in the playoffs, like, really quick. Yeah. So... I was like, man, I don't know if Brady can do it anymore, blah, blah, blah. He took on the new challenge and maybe went to a better team, but it yeah. was a new team. They didn't have much of an off season because of COVID. It was all virtual. Like they had to meet up at high schools and throw balls to each other and stuff like that. So it was, like you said, it's a new challenge. And I think that Tampa will probably be his last stop. Like I don't think he'll go anywhere else, but um, it's it's a testament to his longevity that he's always looking for something to do. Right. And that that all I'm telling you, and that all comes from your upbringing and how you were mm-hmm. what you got to overcome. Tom Brady, obviously, six round LeBron James had to overcome adversity in his life and what was going on with his mom and helping her and moving from city to city. And then you look at obviously we know about Conor McGregor and how he had a, he was an Irish debt like in his video yeah. debt bureau. And then now he's he just he has that fire because that's how he was raised. Russell Wilson, you got the Dak Prescott's. Um, mm-hmm. But let's transition to. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. So your very own Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, take me through that Cleveland game. So I see that like it was a weird concussion. It was. I just feel that was such an impressive win, in my opinion, for the Chiefs mm-hmm. and especially Andy Reid. So what did you take away from that, and also from the Browns' point of view? First of all, hats off to the Browns for a great season. Like me and you have talked about Baker Mayfield throughout this season and how yeah. he's maybe not an elite quarterback, but he's definitely asserted himself as a good one and a good quarterback with that defense, that running game, that's going to win you a lot of games. So I mean, he right. balled out in the first half, man, but the Mahomes injury was really weird. And like I was talking to somebody this week 
and they said that they asked him like a bunch of questions because he was in protocol or whatever. He only missed one of them. And it was like a really, really specific question about the game. And like he just forgot or whatever. And he would have went back in if it weren't for that. Like he was ready to go back in running around because like they showed he came off the field because he got up and was dizzy as hell. Like that dude had no clue where he was at. Yeah. Then took off running into the tunnel like nothing happened. So then I was like, uh, that's kind of weird. Then after the game, Reed wouldn't call it a concussion. Then Monday morning, Reed wouldn't call it a concussion. And I was like, so does he have one or not? So he's in the protocol for a concussion, but I Be don't safe. think he actually has one. But I think, like you said, um, they're just kind of following the rules and being safe. Because it was weird. It was more of like a twist. Like it, it, it wasn't like just a necessarily like a hard hit, like how Lamar received one. Yeah. On that game, like it was just, it was different. So it didn't look as bad. Obviously, we don't know. You want to be cautious, and we don't know how it was for him. But from a viewer standpoint, it didn't look like the typical hard hit to the head. Well, and like people brought up like a chokehold, and when you're fighting, where you might get a pinched nerve or you lose your breath for a minute, and then you yeah. get knocked out for like ten seconds, then you're good to go. But that's what some people thought it was. And I mean, I I'm not gonna put it past them, but he's supposed to hopefully practice Wednesday and then practice fully Thursday and just, I, I think he'll be ready to go. But that's, I wanted to ask you, cause you watch a lot more than I do. Does that stuff kind of, is that possible in football? Yes. Like it's, it was a really weird injury. Well, I can speak on, I trained MMA and I did jujitsu and mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point where I almost passed out. And so when someone initially lets go, you're lightheaded and it's like, yeah. whoa. And so like when, again, it's different because it wasn't necessarily a rare naked choke that he was in. But when you mm-hmm. have pressure around that area, your initial reaction is you, you kind of just have to gather yourself, your equilibrium, where you're at, the attention. And then after a while, you walk, okay, the blood's flowing again. You're kind of getting mm-hmm. your bearings back. But to your point, it's just a different scenario. But I would guess he would be okay, and I think he'll play against the Bills. That's kind of my gut on the situation. But obviously, we're not in there, but that would be my guess. Yeah, and and like you said, uh, I kind of went away from what you said about it being an impressive win, man. Chad Henney, that run on third and 14, <laughs> like 30, 35, 36 year old Chad Henney taking off and then diving. Like, man, that team is special. Like, they have yeah. dudes who Kelsey said they didn't even change the game plan. They're like, we're just going to keep playing the same game, whether Mahomes is in there or not. Like, that team. Then Andy Reid to call a pass play yes. on fourth and one to ice. First of all, to go for it on fourth and one, Different. then to call a pass. I was like, dude. I, it was insane. It was insane. Aggressive wins, and obviously you want to be strategic with your aggressiveness. Andy mm-hmm. Reid deserves so much credit because you know how yeah. many people – well, we've seen it. A lot of people don't go for that. And so for him to take that risk with the backup, I thought that was amazing. I thought that was incredible, and that's obviously what sealed the game. Yeah, and that dude, man, I'm so glad he got a Super Bowl because that was literally the only thing he didn't have. He had the wins. He had the quarterbacks. He had a bunch of bad teams that he made good, and everyone was like – Oh, he can't win a Super Bowl. Then he won one. He might win two. He might get more than that. Like it's, he's he one of the top. He's probably a top ten coach all time. Like when it's all said and done, that dude's that dude's a legend. And one thing you hear about him is the respect he has from all his players. Like you, when you hear yeah. Michael talk about him, Michael Vick can't stop talking highly of him. Like he has the respect of the players, and I think that's such an important thing because the players truly know what it's like or what that coach is truly like more than anybody. I mean, we could sit here and talk, but to actually be coached by him and you're getting the same feedback from all the players who are coached by him. That's not a coincidence that it's all great feedback. Yeah. He's a player's coach for sure. And like, he's, he's not hard on him. He's a nice guy. Um, He's been around for, he's been around football for probably 40 years, like maybe more than that. That dude's just, he's special, man. I think that this team is, has the potential to do some damage. Yeah. And so now we look at the bills who obviously um, are an insane winning streak right now. The momentum, Josh Allen is, to be 250 and as big as he is and to be able to move the way he does, like mm-hmm. he's special. He's got an arm, but the game was obviously really windy. So some of his throws were off, but I, I would credit that towards the wind a lot of the mm-hmm. time. Um, this Bills team is nasty. I thought we both thought we they would beat Baltimore. It was our game of the week to kind of look for as far as entertainment and just, wow, it can go either way. But we both picked um, Buffalo. So now we do get the Bills and the Chiefs. And I feel like the cream has arrived to the top. Like this is what yeah. two best are meeting each other. This is how it's supposed to be. Um mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Who are you going with? And what should each team going in? What is their agenda? What is their strategy going into this game? Would you believe? I think it's kind of similar to um, Green Bay and Tampa, where like 
you have one team that's clearly better than the other one, yep. and you have two really high-flying offenses that you're going to have to keep up points with. And then on the other side, if you can't put pressure on that superstar quarterback, you're not going to win. Like, it's just simple and plain. That's that's my key. Josh Allen had all day in the pocket to throw. All day. Yeah. He, he was just taking his time with every single throw. Besides, yeah. like, maybe one or two possessions he got tagged. Other than that, Baltimore wasn't able to get to him at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's – I believe there's like a 50% chance of snow here in Kansas City for that game. So it's going to be – Mahomes claims he's a snow game guy. Obviously, Josh Allen being up in Buffalo, he's no stranger to it. He played football at Wyoming in college. So, man, this this one might be one of the best AFC championship games we've seen. Like, I thought that the game against uh, Baltimore was going to be one of those, and it was really a yeah. dud. So I, I hope this one lives up to expectations. Well, you brought up an amazing point on our last show last week, and you said Patrick Mahomes, the all-time greats have this, is petty. And yes. what did he do? <laughs> he, li- he liked Odell Beckham Jr.'s tweet saying, don't be surprised when we in that game. Yeah. So he's aware of this stuff, and I'm, I know he hears the Bills, and I know he hears about Josh Allen, and I know what he – he has his ears open, and that's what the all-time greats do. They find things to motivate them. So I certainly think he's going to come back, and he's going to play with this game – uh, with a little extra chip on his shoulder, if that makes sense. Because I know he hears the comparisons of, oh, is Josh Allen right on his tail? And this will be the opportunity to show, no, there, there's a gap. Yeah, no, he's he's a super petty dude. Like, right yeah. after the game, he tweeted, I think, it was the <laughs> Kevin Garnett gif, and he was like, anything is possible. And this, like, the first reply yep. said, uh, the refs helped you to another Super Bowl, and Mahomes liked it. I was like, oh, my God, that dude, like... He doesn't care. <laughs> he's like the most low key savage player in the NFL. And he just, he'll never go out and say anything like that, yeah. but he'll do it on the field and he'll go on Twitter and just like stuff and not even say anything about it. I wish Kevin Durant would take a, pa- a page out of Patrick Mahomes, book yes. because it peeps everything, but he gives too many people, in my opinion, I think he gives too many people the time of day. And it's yes. like, if he would just note it, okay, add it for fuel. Like just Patrick peep Mahomes, it. Your point. Patrick Mahomes says all the right things, but he shows that he peeps it, and so now yeah. it's like, hey, I got you. And I wish yeah. Kevin would do that. I feel like that would just save him so much energy and time. Yeah. No. Just peep it and move on. Like that in life. Like this is for yeah. our lifestyle podcast that we're going to start up at some point in the future. But just yeah. just peep it, peep it and move on. Like you don't have to say anything. Yeah. Just let your actions speak for you, and just peep it and move on. Yeah, seriously, there's always going to be people in life who think you can't do something or going to say mm-hmm. something negative. And like you said, a life podcast, I mean, it happens to me all the time. And so it's like, yep. God, I were to, if I were to listen or respond to every person, oh, you're going to start a podcast? You know how many people are like, oh, that's a dumb idea? And it's like, okay, yeah. and so I peep it. And so now, now <laughs> yeah, I was doing great. Yeah, so um, I'm rolling with the Chiefs and I'm rolling with Green Bay. Is that who you're rolling with? Yeah, do we want to do scores or do we want to just do picks? Scores are hard, man, because it never goes the way I want it to. We can let's let's we can go the extra. I mean, as long as we're right about the picks, that's that. Well, that's what matters most. Yeah. But let's, let's do the icing on the cake because we're getting down here to the wire. Let's do some scores. All right, so let's start with uh, Green Bay, Green Bay, Tampa. I'm gonna go. I think the line is three and a half, which like the home team gets three. So basically, they're saying Vegas is like shrugging their shoulders and is like, I don't know. So I'm gonna go thirty-four twenty-eight Green Bay. Okay, I was gonna, I, yeah, I was gonna go around thirty twenty three. Yeah, I was, I was gonna go thirty twenty three Green Bay. Okay, that was my little sweet spot. So okay, we're about in agreement there. Um, so okay, obviously they cover that. So then we're gonna go Chiefs Buffalo. Is this a shootout or is this a dud? I'm going forty two thirty one. I think it's gonna be just back and forth, back and forth the entire game. So you said forty two thirty one? Yeah. Okay. So the, man, that's eleven points. I yeah, didn't even think about that. Spread. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna change it to thirty or forty-two, thirty-four. I'll make it eight points. Okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go. I think I do think they're gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna go thirty-eight, thirty-two. I just have a. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna go around there. I think that I think they'll go back and forth, but I think Andy Reid. Mahomes, obviously, I have them winning, but yeah, I'm gonna go around there. I, I could see 40 points is a lot of points. I could, but I, yeah. I mean, Mahomes and the Chiefs. So, but and and if it snows though, you have to take that in account. That's gonna be a little tough. That's, that's true, man. Watch like Green Bay <laughs> and Tampa is gonna be like 10-7, and then yep. 
Kansas City Buffalo is going to be like twenty to seventeen or something. Like it's they're both going to be low scoring. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. No, I'll roll that. So I'm gonna go. God, because I'm thinking. I'm. You know what? I'm all right. Officially, I'm gonna go thirty-eight thirty for that game. All right. Okay, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm gonna go that route. I think I'm. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, all right. So we have Chiefs. We both have Green Bay. That then we'll we'll do a Super Bowl episode, obviously. But that's the. Oh, yeah. that's, we both see the same Super Bowl. Yeah, great minds think alike, and then ours do too. So <laughs> there's that. Yes, sir. Jordan, it is always a pleasure. You allow me to bug you once a week with NFL. Uh, where can people find you? Social media, you have one of the best Twitter handles in the game. Your Instagram as well. <laughs> can they find you? Yeah, uh, follow me on Instagram at jfoot underscore um, or footnoted on Twitter. I'm doing like a ton of NFL stuff right now, but also uh, trying to keep in the loop with NBA and then I guess when baseball starts, I have to keep up with that too. So it's a, it's a never ending kind of following everything as much as I can. So I definitely want to dive into baseball more. That's one thing that a lot of people ask me Mm -hmm. to talk about that I don't talk about enough. So I think I'm going to dive in that with you. So I'll be picking your brain and uh, texting you a lot when it comes to baseball, because that's something I need to, I talk UFC, I'm talking NBA, talk NFL. I got to give the baseball fans some love. So that's one thing I, I want to explore a little bit more into as well. I'm down baseball and golf. Like I know golf is either people love it or hate it. There's no, yeah. Oh, golf is okay. Like it's either golf sucks. It's boring or golf yep. is the best. And like, I am firmly in the latter. Like, I think I love golf, blah, 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 whatever, but man, it's not for everybody. Like if you had a golf podcast, only people who like golf would listen. To that. Right. It's not like a football thing where, Oh, a fair weather football fan would listen. Like you have to be a golf super fan purist in order to tune into that. But baseball, baseball, I think is pretty fair. One thing I've noticed about golf that everyone unanimously agrees on is Tiger Woods. If, yes. If Tiger Woods is playing. You're going to watch. That's, that's the one thing I've, I've certainly mm-hmm. noticed. He's bigger than the sport. And that reminds me of like Connor and UFC in a way. It's like, yeah. it's just so weird. It's like, he's become so big where my grandma can't stop watching tiger woods like she can't get enough of him and so that's one thing i certainly have noticed jordan it is always a pleasure next week we're going to be breaking down even more so please give my guy a follow on all social media accounts i love your work we'll continue grinding it uh we'll talk soon yep thanks a lot man